All right, so satellite video has showed dozens of lightning strikes within Hurricane Dorian's boundaries as the storm approaches the Florida coast. Uh, it is, uh, what do they say, is a Cat 3 now, I think it is? So you look at the video. I mean, it, the video is stunningly beautiful from the satellite. Uh, of course, this is obviously a big storm. I still don't know if it's going to be you know, as powerful as they think when it hits land, but uh, they think that it might get to a Cat 4. The the thing about Dorian is that it's slow. It is very, very slow. And when you have slow hurricanes, you have flooding because of the rain. Uh, so this is not necessarily the wind damage. You know, obviously that can be a factor. But even with the weaker hurricanes, when they make landfall, if they move slow like that, you tend to have a lot of flooding, uh, which obviously causes a lot of damage. So that's what everybody's watching and everybody's taking a look at. Um, you did have these. These idiots out there hoping and praying that it hits Florida and destroys Mar-a-Lago because um, Orange Man bad. You know, these these deranged people are actually wishing, okay, for hurricane damage to fellow Americans. And it's not just the president, because if you if you damage Mar-a-Lago, you are going to be damaging everybody around Mar-a-Lago. And that is it. it we were talking about this at at past the mic today where. Somebody had asked a question, and uh, Ruth, I believe it was, who's on the live stream usually, um, was asking a question of like, how can we, um, you know, be progressive without progressives, like with, you know, rights and things and, you know, on social issues and things of that nature. And, um, I apologize if I butchered that question, but it was a good question. I, I was pointing out that, you know, most of us get along pretty darn good. You know, for the most part, Americans get along despite their differences. You know, we are the most culturally and racially diverse place on the planet. And by a wide margin, there's nowhere else in the world that comes close to us for diversity. And as a result of that, you're going to have some conflicts. You're going to have some, some stow tepping, if you will. But most of us get along. Yeah, we, how many times have you heard me say it? Your coworkers, your neighbors, your relatives, uh, even friends that disagree with you on certain issues. You know, you're not trying to claw each other's eyeballs out every single day. You know, you, you get along unless you you or the other person are deranged. And at that point, yeah, you guys are probably, you know, coming to fisticuffs and that sort of stuff. But yeah, really, for the most part, we either don't talk about it or we joke and, you know, kind of rib one another about it. Or maybe we'll get really creative with some of the insults, but it's all in fun and games. But that's not what you see in the press, right? And the political parties, you know, all of the political parties are responsible for this, too. And you, you kind of divide everybody out into their bases and you look at one base and you go, all right, uh, the other side is evil. And because the other side is evil, you have to be with us no matter what we do, because even if we do evil, it is purely because we can't let them do evil. So we have to do evil to keep the evil people or more evil than us from doing evil to everybody. So we're going to do a little bit of evil to prevent a lot of evil. And you got to stick with us to prevent big evil. Okay? It's ridiculous. Now, there are people who just get involved in all of this stuff that are just bad people. Now, that does happen. All right? There are bad people that get involved in politics. And uh, unfortunately, you have people who defend bad people. And that's not something that you want. Uh, you obviously want the best and the brightest on all sides to rise to the top. And you want the lowest common denominator to sink. So that way you don't have to deal with them anymore. Uh, and unfortunately, increasingly in our society, because of this tribalism, we are pushed to choose a side. And even if you have a side, sometimes in a certain argument, your side may not be right. You know, it's there. There's nobody's 100 percent right. Nobody's 100 percent wrong. And that's why even amongst the various political factions there's still infighting because there's disagreements on certain things. Uh, but. When you're at a point. I was mentioning this today at Pass the Mic. When you're at a point where instead of having vigorous debate, having an election, the results of the election happen, and everybody goes, all right, well, we gave, we gave it our best try. Uh, we'll, we'll try again in a couple of years, and hopefully this works out. Okay. Instead of doing that and going back to your normal lives with the peaceful transition of power that we so, so richly enjoy yet take for granted, in the United States of America, and really in, in all Western culture. What we have now is we have 
We're going to go to the streets. We're going to call people names. We're going to attack vehicles that have bumper stickers on it that we don't like. We're going to physically assault people who wear a red hat. We're going to uh, pepper spray people who have peaceful protests that we don't like or that we disagree with. And we're going to do all of these horrible things because, well, they're justified because the other side is evil. And then you go ahead and you call them a bunch of weird names and things like that. And the culmination of that is violence. And it's not the vast majority of Americans who, who do this or even ascribe to it. It's very few people who are that radicalized. And perhaps you look at it uh, on the internet and maybe people just are bloviating on the internet because they think they can get away with it on the internet. You wish for entire communities to be destroyed. Why? Because somebody you disagree with politically has a property there. I know it sounded like a, a roundabout way to get back to where I was going, but the path was pretty darn clear. We're literally wishing for whole communities to be harmed, people potentially to be killed, certainly having their lives severely interrupted as a result of wanting to destroy a property that belongs to somebody that you happen to not like politically. That is the lowest common denominator people who think that way are the worst of us not the best of us not the average of us they're the worst of us and unfortunately they are more and more emboldened now i want you to think about this like no no no, no. i want everywhere around mar-a-lago to be okay i just want mar-a-lago to be damaged so in case you're just you're totally taking me out of cause I, all right cool there's hundreds of people that work at mar-a-lago maybe thousands but their lives aren't impacted by losing their job. Then you have to think about the the uh, the tax base of the community because now those people aren't working, so there's less taxes coming in there, which means there's less uh, social programs and things of that nature. I mean, you start going down the gambit of this, and yeah, you're wishing for great damage on a community, which of course FEMA kicks in, and that's federal tax dollars too. You know, that's less money that we have going back into our own communities, too. And just because you don't like somebody and you want everything that they own destroyed. You know, I don't like Bernie Sanders all that much. Um, I, I don't think that I've ever once had a thought about destroying one of his three houses. <laughs> I don't think that's ever come up. You know, I could point out all day long how he's a hypocrite for having three houses and how those three houses cost an awful lot of money. And it sure is interesting how he suddenly made all of that money and now, there might seem to be some impropriety there, but I'd never thought that it would be justifiable to go destroy one of his houses just to kind of show him. You know, I, I think I might have teased once about going to move into one of them and say, well, you know, I don't have a house, Bernie, so you got to share one of these three uh, just because it's a socialist canard, if you will. But um, you actually have people out there hoping that Hurricane Dorian destroys communities and people's lives. What a horrible thing. It's not the first time, by the way. Remember, shortly after the last election, when a hurricane was heading towards Florida, and there's a bunch of liberals that hopped onto social media and said, we hope it destroys Florida. Shame on them for voting for Trump. Because the state went red. That's a pretty low thing to think. we got more coming up. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel.